Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. Um, I'm sampling new stuff now. When I say sampling new stuff, I mean new to me. So what I like to do is I like to get the products and I like to mess about. It's really important. Why do we do that? Because I need to get to know it. I need to know what it does and how it does that. So sometimes people ask me, well, sometimes a lot of the time people ask me, can you just? And I'm like, it really gets to me to think that people are worried about trying it. So we're doing a little series of videos where we're going to say, right, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how I do it. And hopefully it'll inspire you to create your own ways of doing things. So the first thing is, I've got some Cosmos paints. Now, the Cosmos paints, we'll be doing them in a little bit, but the ones that I want to concentrate on at the beginning um, in the first sort of set of videos are the new Crackle. Now, I've tried Crackle. I've tried it a lot. And I can't get anything to work. This works. Well, hey. So, whenever you get a new product, if there is information available, please read it. I'm the world's worst for not bothering. Please read it because you'll cut out all that experiment or mistakes that perhaps you don't want to do. So I've been online and had a good look at it and I found how I like to do it from all the information. So I'm going to start. So the Crackle has a two set. There's two steps in all of it and it's quite easy to determine. It's got a step one and a step two. I'm not being facetious in any way because it sounds a bit rude that, but every one of them has got step one and a step two. It, I've mixed these up and it didn't seem to matter because um, they sort of fell out of my box. But you'll notice that there's different colours and there's a reason for that. So we've got step two and we have a step one with it. Step two, step one. So I'm going to do some short, quick videos on what this looks like as you use it. So I've also got some paints because I could try it with them. So the first thing is, what is it? Well, it creates a crackle very quickly. Um, Eve... Even when you think you're going to need this paint under that, that paint under that, it doesn't. It just needs the two steps and then a little application later. So what do you do? It's really important that you check that you've got the right stage first. So we get step one. So we get step one and I'm going to do it on the black so you can see actually how much of a coat I put on. Now... Water isn't good for your brushes with this stuff. Although it's water-based, which is brilliant, it means it cleans out your brushes really quick. What we don't want to do is have lots of water that's staying in the brush. We want to dry it as much as possible. So we tend to get, always make sure you clean your brush or keep separate ones for each ones and make sure, even though I've washed this yesterday, I can still see water in it. I don't want to change the compound of this step one. I want it to remain. Give it a good shake. Always make sure that it says step one. And this is the transparent spider crackle. So I'm using step one and I'm just gonna put it a bit on there. I don't use too much, but this is really important. Whichever direction you use, keep it going that way because the next coat goes on the opposite way. So it is easy to see because I'll show you in a bit. So I'm going to do just a thin coat that way. Now, I've chosen black so that you can see the actual application. Okay, so that's it. And I love that colour it goes, but it's gone like a milky colour. But it does dry clear. So... What you do when that's dry is we put the second coat on. So I've already done some for you, but I will show you what the second coat looks like. You won't be able to see it on this. The crack, the crackle on it. I know, I know the um, the sort of surface you can see, but you won't be able to see anything cracking on this until I show you the next one when it's dry. So don't worry, you won't see it until it dries but the thing is don't force dry this let it dry naturally um i would say if i was doing to dry this at home i would leave it in a room not in sunlight for about 30 minutes but it has been drying a lot faster just recently so 20 minutes and when you know it's still tacky but it's not it, it's not wet 
it sounds strange that, but it's a bit like double-sided tape, but not wet to the touch. So it starts, it goes from this milky colour, as you can see, the milkiness has gone, and it comes to this shine. Now, you can see, see it on black better. So what you then do is choose the colours. So we've got like a, um, a caramel, um, which these are the colours I call it because it's... So we've got a transparent antique brown. We have got the tr cashmere, transparent cashmere. We've got a white or clear as we call it. And then we've got the blue. And the blue is ice blue it's got a great finish but i've got them all finished for you so no problems so once we've done that you can see now that the texture can you see the brush strokes have gone that way what i tend to do then is only i turn it this way because i tend to like to do that so as as i know it's gone that way i let it dry so if it was this one brush strokes that way you can see I would turn it that way. So if you get into a routine where you know that that is horizontal, then vertical, or keep them both and just turn the card, jobs are good. Now you must clean your brush. Always dry it. Now this is my second brush. And then you get step two. Now step two is slightly different in consistency. And if you see the colour is slightly different as well. So we've got these. So I'm going to use the step two in i think i'll go with t -t 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 -t. let me think now this one and white again so again i don't tend to put too much on because it's important this next step is really important you don't overwork it you don't go back and forth at all what you do is you apply david has a really work good way of doing this you apply i'm going that way because it's the opposite way and you just apply enough at the top and then I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to work it down I don't overgo too much so that's two strands uh, two sweeps there and that's all I do now if I've missed bits you're all right to go back there but what you don't do is that because that changes the structure of the paint of the adhesive and it just doesn't it doesn't give you the same cracks so you leave that to dry. So recap, you go one way, let it dry. Next step, opposite way, let it dry. And you end up, and I've done it on brown so you can see, you end up with a great crackle. So I'll just pick that up. I know you can see it, but it might be difficult now. I've got a couple here to show you different colors. So you will see there is a difference. One's cashmere, one's the dark warm brown, warm brown cashmere, blue, believe it or not, and the white. But you can see each one has a different crackle. So what we do now is we can leave it like that. If you've got a rice paper, that looks wonderful on it because it gives it that old look, but we're going to add a little bit more. Now I'm going to make this pop for you. So I'm going to go with a really bright color and there's nothing better in my opinion not that's worth much, then turquoise and brown. I don't know why, I just love it. So I'm going to get a little bit of turquoise and I'm just going to not dirty my, uh, my wonderful mat. So just plot a little bit out. I don't need a lot. Now you can use your extender with these later on, but I would suggest you use these neat. Um, and I'm just going to get a sponge or a brush is fine, but you want something that you can cover fast because you need to add a tiny bit of water. Not a lot, take most of it off because you just want to make the end sort of workable. And then we go in. Now, my suggestion is have a water bottle near you, put another piece of paper underneath. There we go, so I'm not dirty my mat. And I'm just gonna rub it in. Now, I'll put it onto the brown as well and then rub it off. So that's a very light coat. So put some more in. But So you can just see it, but then wipe that off. Now, if you feel that you need a bit more taken away, you can do and get a really fine crackle on it. But if I put some more on, you'll see. 
and I'll even go darker. So this is a turquoise, but I'll show you what they look like with a black on them as well. So just wipe it off. A lint-free cloth is much better and we just get that wonderful crackle just there. But I will do it on a black here just to show you. So just got a little bit of the black. And again, we use cut and dry, which is... I have shook these up, but I think I needed to shake them down a bit. Uh, cut and dry is a great way of applying them. If you haven't got a sponge, just drop them in water. They'll be right then. So spread a tiny bit onto that. Now you hopefully will be able to see this a bit better. Don't water down your paint too much because it's that action of pushing it in. So a bit more water. And you might be able to see how strong. So you can do it turquoise, blue, anything. You can do it black. But this gives you that wonderful crackler. And it mats it down in some places. You can just see how oh, it looks really old and ancient. And it's beautiful. So I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like on the others. So here's the blue so we've got a blue tinge to it i'm just going to put a little bit of there get that in a bit more paint actually you don't need too much it's you, it's it's better to add than it is to take away because honestly it you don't want it to stay on the paint um, on the crackle rather than being able to wipe it away I mean, David uses a, a little sponge, which is great. You can use a wet wipe as well, if you still use them. But you can just see how this one's a finer one in the blue. I've left it here. I've just left it thicker, so the crackles are more in depth. So each one has a different crackle. Each one, I'll bring the other one in, has a slightly different crackle. You can just see. And I'll add a white to this now, so that we get what it looks like with a light. So these are on brown. I wanted it to look like leather actually, which I think it does do. So I've got a light color. So I'm gonna go in with the light and then you'll be able to see what it looks like. Light and dark, both on brown. Tiny bit more water on this one. Now, if you've done this on a big surface, you'd be surprised how wonderful how aged it looks like a real ancient sort of artifact but um you can add more take it away you know keep doing that until you're happy with what you've got so the white now really shows up so i'll put some more on and you can keep doing this push it right into those little cracks and then the tacky surface will be go will go then when it's dry you'll notice so I've got a, a bigger crack there, but what I can do is, if I wish, just mix the colours on it. So I can add a little bit of that and then a grey and I can get an ombre crackle. And that gives you a really distinct, different look. And it is, even though it's cooled down a bit today, it is quite warm. But I think to see on camera, the best way to see it is with the white. I just think it gives it such a pop. So... The last one is the, oh, here we go. I tried to find, you've got to look at them in the light and then see, I did another one on black to show you, so I'll do this with white. Um, where's my little brush gone? Just use this. So I'll use it in the lid. There it is. So I'll do this on black and then push this in and you'll see it hopefully. Then I'll just get, tiny bit of water, a little bit of cloth, so the more you leave the paint on the surface the more it's going to dry so you have to be mindful to be quick but then you wipe it off so build it up one layer and then really push it in and then take that off and you'll see that you'll get to this is all about experimenting all about experimenting so you get different effects different color tones so then we can see all these cracks appearing here so let's get them all back and we can see what we've done so 
different colours, different effects, different techniques, but at you know you can get to see how wonderful they look especially when you see the white pushed into it i mean i, I think it's a little bit difficult to see in parts but if I push it into this and don't be worried about mixing colors this is the best bit about it because they look brilliant if you start to mix colors it's almost like you would get you'd get a different patina on different varnishes um they create different colors Right, so we've got the blue, which has given us a nice sort of soft effect and a smaller crackle. We've got the brown, the two browns. So this is the uh, cashmere and this is the dark brown transparent. And this one is the clear. So you can just see how strong that crackle comes up with the white. So my advice is before you do your product, always, always test on different things. I then keep these right on the back what I've done and I've got a visual for later on down the line because I always forget what I've done. So that's it for this one. So join me in the next video where we go even further with the different paints. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.